And a good Thursday midday to you. Roger Hill of Weathering Heights. This Velcro Weather Hazards Outlook and weather video is driven by 802cars.com. They represent 802 Toyota, Twin City Subaru, and 802 Honda. They're all located off of Exit 7 on Interstate 89. Big picture, uh, looking at the country right now, we have this big broad ridge that extends way up into portions of Canada. Upper level low that's off to the north and east uh, in the northern Canadian Maritimes. And we have kind of a flow and a frontal system that's going to be dropping in. This is going to be producing some scattered showers and thunderstorms out ahead of this uh, frontal boundary, especially in those areas that see a little bit of sunshine. And these are going to make a run, it looks like, into the St. Lawrence River Valley. And right along the northern tier regions a little bit later today, we're looking at generally after 5 o'clock. And then uh, one or two of these storms could get right up into our neck of the woods here in the far northern areas. Otherwise, uh, we're going to see kind of off and on periodic uh, shower and thunderstorm activity. Uh, really not anticipating anything that's going to be major uh, through this entire period for this outlook. That goes basically into the early morning hours on Wednesday. Looking at the European model, the incrementals here, uh, this is our frontal system that's going to try to drop in. And you can see a little wave of low pressure is kind of working on out of the region. And uh, the way this is set up, this is valid at uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon. And so if you look very carefully, you see a little bit of precipitation here up toward the Montreal area coming in out of the Ottawa Valley. And a lot of that makes it into the northern part of the Adirondacks and it does kind of fall apart as it makes it into Vermont. This is valid at 03Z. That's uh, 11 o'clock this uh, this uh, Thursday evening. Then we get into the overnight period. And then Friday, we're looking at a little bit more shower and thunderstorm activity. This is valid about 8 o'clock in the morning. And you can see just a little bit of precipitation here. We're not looking at anything major. It seems like the areas most affected uh, when we get into the afternoon on Friday will be across the Connecticut River Valley, a little bit more in the Northeast Kingdom. And, of course, uh, across a good portion of southern Vermont, staying mostly out of the northwest corner of the state. It's like the northwest one quarter or so. Then uh, taking that a little bit further, these die out in the evening hours on Friday evening. And then uh, we're looking at a better day on the 4th of July. This is probably a little bit of a convective feedback issue. I'm not anticipating any precipitation here. That kind of disappears anyway, so it's kind of a spurious, but uh, we get into... Sunday, we should see a little more of an uptick in shower and thunderstorm activity. This is valid at 8 o'clock on Sunday. And then here, you start to see that across our northern tier. A little bit later in the afternoon, this is valid 5 o'clock in the uh, late in the day. And you can see some precipitation here. This would more than likely be some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity for Sunday. Now, that kind of drops in and dissipates out eventually. We're looking at drying conditions as we head into Monday as well as Tuesday. Of next week. Beyond the period, that may even last into Wednesday. And that's about the last panel we're going to go here, but an area of higher pressure seems to be kind of falling apart, a little bit of a ridging, and uh, that might give us another day just beyond this period. I'm going to go with uh, three hourly QPF here, and you can see that uh, centered this evening. This is centered on Montpelier, Vermont. You can see a little bit of uh, precipitation expected uh, with the uh, GFS Canadian Ensemble. Then also on Friday, a little bit more as well. Then we have Saturday, 4th of July is not going to be a problem. We get into Sunday, it's a little bit more. And looking at the overlaying the capes, convective available potential energy, Biggest uh, is going to be tonight in the northern border area. Not so much going on on Friday, not as much, but a little bit more as we head into the period on Sunday. And then beyond that, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And overlaying shear, this is 25, 30, 35, 40 knots. We're going to be kind of seeing that shear kind of fall apart and, if anything, decline. And uh, then looking at the dates for Friday, uh, we're not looking at anything about 25 to 30 knots. And then the same thing along about Sunday. QPF right now looks like we're around a half inch, or maybe a little bit more than that. Maybe up to an inch in some parts of southern New England. Uh, we're looking at less precipitation, definitely this period. It's going to exacerbate our already dry conditions in those areas that did not receive healthy rainfall over the last uh, four days. Back to the GFS and Canadian Ensemble, you can see this is a, a basically a temperature is at 850 hectopascals, about the top of Mount Mansfield, and it's relatively warm. That uh, shows today Thursday. Then we cool things off aloft a little bit. 
a little bit of an uptick. We stay kind of cool over the weekend, and then we start to ramp the temperature up. And uh, overlaying the 2-meter temperatures in the Barry Montpelier area, you kind of see pretty good diurnal ranges in temperature and a little bit of a cool off and then a little bit of a rise. And looking at dew point temperatures, uh, less humidity once we work into this even this uh, weekend. A little bit of an uptick once we get into the 5th there on Saturday, uh, Sunday I should say, and then a little bit of a downtick. Meteorological output statistics, the guidance uh, shows uh, for the max temperatures uh, warmer to our north and west, and indeed that's what's working in today, uh, Thursday, and a little cooler off to the east where that upper level system is pulling away now. So what about uh, three days later? We warm up 6 to 12 degrees above normal. And looking at the um, two meter temperature anomalies right now, you can see that the warmest areas are across a good portion of uh, southern Canada. And uh, also a pretty big warm up. Uh, this is uh, some of the stuff that's made it over the Arctic, and now it's resetting up over at the Hudson Bay region for the warmest temperatures. Tropics remain quiet. And finally, we're looking at dust coming in off of Africa with this wide shot. This is a uh, current in real time. And you can see there's some areas of dust coming out. There's one area here, and the last of the dust that made it into the U.S. is uh, pretty much uh, fizzled out and rained itself out. The other thing I want to show you here, this is the GLM, or light, uh, Global Lightning Mapper. You can see these. These are tops of thunderstorms actually showing the lightning. And uh, what you can notice is that all the uh, systems coming off of Africa, and this is the intertropical convergence zone, not a lot of lightning associated with these areas that have the dust, a little bit in... Uh, and some parts of the Crimean Basin. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.